My name is Julian Kelly. I am a quantum hardware team lead in Google AI Quantum. And I'm going to be talking about extracting coherence information from random circuits via something we're calling speckle purity benchmarking. So I want to start by quickly reviewing cross-entry benchmarking, which we sometimes call XEB. So the way this works is we are going to decide on some random circuits. These are interleaved layers of randomly chosen single qubit gates and fixed two qubit gates. We then take this circuit and we send a copy of it to the quantum computer, and then we send a copy of it to a simulator. Um, we take the simulator as the ideal distribution of what the um, quantum evolution should have done, and we compare the probabilities to what the quantum computer did, the measured probabilities. And we expect the ideal probabilities to be sampling from the Porter-Thomas distribution. We can then assign a fidelity for the sequence by comparing the measured and ideal uh, probabilities to figure out how well the quantum computer has done. And again, I want to emphasize that we are comparing the measured fidelity against the expected unitary evolution of what the circuit should have done. So here is what experimental cross-entropy benchmarking data looks like. So what we're going to do is we're going to take data both over a number of cycles and also random circuit instances. And when we look at the raw probabilities, we see that it looks pretty random. So what we're going to do is we then take uh, the unitary that we expect to get, and we can then compute the fidelity. And then out of this random looking data, we see this nice fidelity decay. So the way that this works is that by choosing depolarizing single qubit gates, the errors more or less add up and we get this exponential decay. We can fit this and extract an error per cycle for our XEB sequence. And this is an error per cycle given some expected given unitary evolution. So this is fantastic, but we might be interested in understanding where exactly our errors are coming from. So this is where a technique known as purity benchmarking comes in. And essentially what we're going to do is we're going to take this XEB sequence and we're going to append it with state tomography. So in state tomography, we run a collection of experiments to extract the density matrix row. We can then figure out the purity, which is more or less to trace of row squared. You can think of this as essentially the length of the block vector squared, an n-dimensional block vector. So what happens if we then look at the length of this block vector as a function of the number of cycles in the sequence, we can look uh, at the decay of it, and that tells us something about incoherent errors that we're adding to the system. So basically, uh, the block vector will shrink if we have noise or decoherence. So, um, purity benchmarking allows us to figure out the incoherent error per cycle. And the incoherent error is the decoherence error lower bound. It is the best error that we could possibly get. So this is great. We love this. We use this all the time. Um, it turns out that predicting incoherent error is harder than you think, and it's very nice to have a measurement in situ in the experiment that you're caring about to measure it directly. So with that, um, I'm going to tell a little bit of a story. So uh, last March meeting, I was sitting in some of the sessions, and I was inspired to try some new type of gate. So I decided to run back to my hotel room and code it up and remote in and get things running. And I took this data, and my experimentalist intuition started tingling. And I was thinking that, wow, the performance of this gate seems really bad. So when I was looking at the raw XEB data, I noticed that for a low number of cycles, uh, the data looked quite speckly. And I was pretty happy with the amount of speckliness that was happening down here. But when I went to a high number of cycles, I noticed these speckles started to wash out. And I found the degree of speckliness to be a little bit disappointing, not so speckly. So I started thinking about this a bit more. And this is pretty interesting, because I'm looking at the data, and I'm, and I'm assessing the quality somehow. But I don't even know what unitary I've been actually performing. And shouldn't the XEB data just be completely random? So uh, I formed an extremely simple hypothesis. Maybe this speckle contrast is actually telling us something about the purity, right? So in, in some sense, what I'm saying is that if there's low contrast, it's telling us that our system is decohered in some way. So I did something very, very simple, which is I just took a cut like this, and I took the variance of that, and I plotted it versus cycle number. And I see this nice exponential decay. So um, after this, I got excited, and I went to talk to some of our uh, awesome theory friends, like Sergio uh, Boixo and uh, Sasha Karatkov. And they helped set me straight by going through some of the math. So what we're going to do is we're first going to define a rescaled version of purity that looks like this. And you see that essentially this is trace of row squared, and there's some dimension factors that have to do with the size of the Hilbert space. We define it this way so that purity equals 0 corresponds to a completely decohered state, and a purity of 1 corresponds to a completely pure state. We then uh, assume a depolarizing channel model, which is to say that the density matrix is some polarization parameter p times a completely pure state psi. Uh, plus 1 minus p times the completely decohered uniform distribution, 1 over d. Uh, 
then if you plug these into each other, we can see that these parameters directly relate, the polarization parameters directly related to the square root of purity. Which kind of makes sense because the polarization is telling us how much we're in a pure state versus how much we're in a decohered state. Okay, so now let's talk about what it looks like if we're actually going to try and measure uh, this density matrix rho. If we're measuring probabilities from the pure state um, distribution, we'd expect to get a Porter-Thomas distribution like we talked about before. And what we notice is that there is some variance to this distribution that is greater than zero. However, if we're measuring probabilities from the uniform distribution, which corresponds to a decohered state, um, we see that there's no variance at all. And again, this is an ECDF or an integrated histogram. So this uh, corresponds to a delta function with no variance. And then it turns out, if you then go back and actually do the math, you can directly relate the purity to the variance of the probability distributions times some dimension factors. So um, the point is that we can directly relate purity to variance experimentally from measure probabilities. So is this purity? Yes, turns out. So let's talk about what this looks like in an experiment. So here we took some very dense XEB data, both the number of cycles this way and number of circuit instances that way. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a cut like this. I'm going to plot the, the ECDF, the integrated histogram distribution, and we see that it obeys this very nice Porter-Thomas line. And then if I look over here, when the, we expect the state to have very much decohered, we see that it does look like this decohered uniform distribution like that. So then if we plug all of this data into the handy dandy formula that we showed on the previous slide, we can then compare it to the purity as measured by tomography. And we see that these curves line up almost exactly. And indeed, they provide an error lower bound. They're outperforming the XEB fidelity because there can be some, for example, calibration error. So speckle purity agrees with tomography. Uh, we get it for free from this raw XEB data. And uh, we are noticing this by basically observing a general signature of quantum behavior. That's what these contrasts. Um, mean. So here's a, a simple analogy. So if you take some kind of neato coherent laser and you send it through a crazy crystal medium, you can see the speckle pattern showing up on, for example, a wall. But if you take a kind of boring flashlight and you point it at something, you just get a very blurred out pattern. So this makes sense, which is to say that if you have a very decohered state and you try and perform a complex quantum operation to it, it's really not going to tell you anything. Nothing's going to happen. Okay, so let's talk about um, how to actually understand uh, the cost of these different ways of extracting purity in terms of experimental time. So typically, when we're doing an XCB experiment, we take n random circuits times n repetitions per circuit. And then we may optionally add some number of additional tomography configurations to figure out how much data we need to take. So for example, in two qubits, we may take 20 random circuits, 1,000 repetitions per circuit. And then for two qubits, we have to add an additional nine tomography repetitions. And that means we're taking 200,000 data points to extract a single data point here, which is pretty expensive. If you look at the order scaling, the number of circuits in XAV we typically pick to be about constant. Um, the number of repetitions, it turns out, scales exponentially due to the size of the Hilbert space. But then we also have this additional exponential factor doing full state tomography. So what we're taking away from this is that full state tomography really is overkill for extracting the purity. Um, we can get it just from the speckles with the same information, only we're doing it exponentially cheaper. We're actually getting rid of this 3 to the n factor. Um, and I do want to point out that there's still this exponential factor um, that remains due to having to figure out the full distribution of probabilities. So I want to now actually show data for scaling uh, the number of qubits up to larger system sizes. So we can, for example, extend the XEB protocol to many qubits in a pattern that looks something like this. And we can measure for three qubits, five, seven, or all the way up to 10 qubits to extract, uh, directly extract a purity. And we see that this, this still works. We see that we get nice numbers. We get nice decays out of this. And we can also then compare it to the XEB directly. I want to point out that going all the way up to here, we use kind of standard numbers for the number of sequences and number of stats. But then at this point, we, we started to feel the exponential number of samples that we needed. We had to crank up the repetitions up to 20,000. But even that is really not that much for extracting purity for a 10 qubit system. OK, so now the last thing that we can do is we can actually do some pretty cool error budgeting. So we can benchmark the different error processes versus system size using the data that I just showed. So if we say the XEB error is equal to the incoherent error plus the coherent error, we directly measure the XEB error, and we directly measure the incoherent error, the purity. That allows us to infer the coherent error. So if we look at, for example, the n qubit XEB versus these error mechanisms, we can see that for a low number of qubits, we don't have much coherent error. We are doing a very good job with calibration. But as we scale the system size, we add more qubits, we start to see just a little bit of coherent error being added. And we'd expect that, for example, crosstalk effects to uh, introduce something like this. So we can answer these questions now versus system size, which is, are we getting unexpected incoherent errors as we scale? And we can also answer, are we getting coherent errors 
uh, for example, a crosstalk as we scale. And typically, these are uh, quite challenging to measure. So in conclusion, um, we introduce this notion of speckle purity, and it quantifies the decoherence without even having to know the unitary that you did. Uh, it relies on random circuits and a Porter Thomas distribution, which is important. Um, it comes free with any XEB data that you have. So even if you have a historical data set, you can go and extract this from it, which is pretty neat. Um, we can use it for many qubit systems. We showed up to 10 here. Um, and there's exponentially better scaling than doing full state tomography. Uh, it probes this fundamental behavior of quantum mechanics. And uh, it's pretty neat if you spend some time thinking about it. Uh, I want to point out that we have a discussion of this in the supplemental of our quantum supremacy publication. And I also found this nice paper that talks about a lot of similar concepts um, from 2012.